Last week, we saw an update to Affinity's creative software. Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, Affinity Publisher are now all on version 2.2. So welcome to the end of September news roundup. My name is Brad, I review tech for creative professionals. This is not a huge upgrade. This is just a collection of quality of life improvements. Things like more keyboard shortcuts for pixel brushes in Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer. You can now change things like the flow of the brush or the hardness of the brush without jumping into the setting. Additionally, you can long press on a tool icon to make it active temporarily. So for example, if I'm drawing with a brush or a pencil or tool or something like that, and then I hold on the eraser for a second, I can then use that tool as an eraser until I let go and it just defaults back to the brush I was using. Alt clicking on a layer now creates a selection out of it. You can now toggle on and off layer effects in designer. This is something that can help because those layer effects can tax older and slower computers. They've also added the ability to to toggle grayscale on and off. So if you want to just see, hey, what is the contrast of some of the colors that I'm dealing with, you could do that too. And it's easier to select all your layers at once from the layer palettes. And favorites like in grids now sync between all of the apps. Affinity Publisher is the newer uh, software that they have in their creative suite. So that seemed to get a lot of fixes, little things. I don't use Publisher much, but they added things like the ability to cross-reference, uh, custom text variables, custom date formats. It's better to, or it's easier to find and replace things. So all in all, not any like huge new drops here, just some nice improvements. The other big software update of the week came from Adobe. Now, many of the things they rolled out last week are not necessarily new. There's been things they've been testing out in beta all year. Mostly they're AI tools like Firefly. Some of the other tools like what they have in Photoshop that makes it easier to like fill in the rest of the photo, those kind of generative AI features they've been slowly adding to everything. They're also adding a new app called Adobe Express Premium to all of their Creative Cloud plans as well as 100 fast generative credits a month. That means that you can use their text to AI tool in fast mode 100 times. After that, it defaults to I guess like a normal mode, like a slower mode, it just takes longer to generate images. And if you need more credits, you can purchase 100 more for another about $5. Now the bad news here is those 100 free generative credits that they're putting in every Creative Cloud plan, they aren't actually free. They're raising the price of their main Creative Cloud plan $5 a month to compensate for those 100 generative credits. Some of the individual app accounts are also going up a few bucks, but the education plans, if you're on those, that price remains the same. Now, this isn't all bad news. Adobe has announced a plan to use some of that price increase to compensate stock contributors whose work was used to train the AI. On Adobe's webpage, it says this, all eligible Adobe stock contributors with photos, vectors, or illustrations in the standard premium collection whose content was used to train the first commercial Firefly model will receive a Firefly bonus. What should I talk about now? Next, ooh, bradsartschool.com. That is where you can find more information on all my courses, including Learn to Draw in 60 Days, my latest course. Every day, video lessons, 60 days, build on top of each other. Really easy for newcomers to get involved. If you already have a lot of sketches and you want to learn, hey, how do I finish these off? There's my intro to digital art series where we talk about line art and coloring and painting and that sort of thing. Great for beginners as well and also includes many of the sketches you see in my videos. And if you'd like to learn more, you can go to bradsartschool.com. I have discount codes over there down below in the description if you want to follow those links. And it's a great way to support this channel and what I do. All right, mini review time. This is Rock Paper Pencil. It is a magnetic screen protector for iPads made by the same people who make AstroPad and the Luna display. I like drawing on screen protectors, so this is totally right up my alley. One of the downsides of putting a screen protector on your iPad though is like the colors don't look nearly as sharp and as crisp. The idea with these magnetic ones is that there's like magnets along the top and the bottom. They stick to your iPad and you could just peel it off and see that nice crisp color when you're done drawing or if you just want to check and make sure that your colors are accurate. Or if you just want that big beautiful iPad screen to be big and beautiful when you want to do all of the other things an iPad is good at. I have been using one of these made by somebody else and this seems to be almost identical. It's a little bit stickier to the screen. It's easier to get it on and off. I'm curious to see how that's going to pan out over time if it gets dirty as I take it on and off more. It's not just the bad magnets but the grippiness of the plastic they're using underneath it that's kind of holding it in place. But so far, so good. I'm, I'm digging it. This doesn't look as good as more traditional screen protectors. That's because there is kind of some space there. It's not sticking directly to the screen, so the colors aren't quite as 
punchy. This one also comes with a ballpoint pen tip for the Apple Pencil. It actually comes with two of them. These are incredibly grippy. I was not expecting that. Like, these are super grippy. Honestly, it's a little too much drag for me. I like the screen protector by itself with the original Apple Pencil tip. Uh, these are a great effect though. I think some of you are gonna love it. One thing that I did notice while I was doing this is every time you add more space between your pencil and the screen or the sensors underneath the screen, it adds some like, a little bit of wobble to some of your pencil lines. And this happens with any screen protector. And usually it's not that noticeable, but when you add this screen protector and you add that ball point uh, pen tip, it seems to add just a little more space, just enough space where it's actually adding a fair amount of wobble to your pen. This is something that you could totally get rid of if you add some smoothing to your pen in something like Procreate. So you could totally knock it out, but it is something you should be aware of. Anyway, overall, magnetic screen protector, I dig it. Thumbs up from me. Here's a YouTube video I loved. It's all about how to rotate a box in 3D. Dr. Draw, whose channel this is, he explains this so well. And once you get a feel for how to rotate and draw a box from all of these different angles, it like just blows open all of the things you can draw in perspective. So this is a video that's totally worth checking out. I'm gonna link that down below. Another resource that I ran across this week is an app called Mangaka. I probably shouldn't say it like that. It's this easy to use posing software. It's It reminds me of some of the assets that exist in Clip Studio, but you can do more with them and they're more customizable. So you can take these models and you can resize them and pose them however you want. Use it as a reference for your artwork. The base app is $10 and it's available on Windows or on a Mac. There's some bonus packs here that are available as well that you could purchase. There's things like Rocks in Nature or a Model World Pack with a bunch of like models and real world stuff. Anyway, it's a Steam app. I'll link you to the Steam page down below in the description. Last but not least, I mentioned in last week's video about the new Surface products that Panos Panay was stepping down at Microsoft. And it was a weird time to do that just days before the big product press conference he usually hosts. Windows Central has been reporting on this and they have a little bit more information. By the sound of it, it's not entirely on good terms. Panay reportedly decided to leave after cutbacks and leadership's decisions, which led to Microsoft being unable to ship new Surface form factors. Now Microsoft wants Surface to focus only on its core products, not the experimental stuff. This is a bummer for me. This doesn't mean that there won't be more Surface products in their future. I think there definitely will be, but we're probably going to see updates to what's already there. Less out of the box thinking on what Windows can do if they're able to control the hardware and the software. And I'm also a little bit surprised because I assume that Microsoft was able to walk and chew gum at the same time. They're a huge company. I think they could do a lot of different things at once. And what I've always loved about the Surface line is that by innovating on the hardware side, it pushed them to add more features on the software side, and then other manufacturers could take some of those features and run with it. That's how we get things like this Lenovo with two screens or the Acer laptops that were coming out that had multiple screens. When you experiment like that, some of your products are a hit and some of your products are a mess. Some of your products come out as way too expensive, but that's just the price you pay and innovation drives down the cost over time. Wish Penos all of the best luck at his new position at Amazon. Wish the Surface thing was still going strong, but you know, it is what it is. So that is the news for the end of September. What did I miss? Send anything that I did my way. Let me know down below in the comments. You might see yourself in a future video. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you in a couple of